A senior defense official confirms to Fox News that five Chinese Navy ships have been spotted in the Bering Sea off the Alaskan coast. This sighting coincides with President Obama's visit to the state. In a few hours, China will also conduct a massive military parade in Beijing, featuring 10,000 soldiers, hundreds of aircraft, and weapons not previously shown in public. Defense officials say they're monitoring the Chinese activity closely. The United States is closely watching a Russian military vessel that had been sailing near a U.S. nuclear missile submarine base. Defense officials say the ship is gathering intelligence against the U.S. nuclear missile submarines and other targets. That ship's been tracked from the northern Atlantic near Canada since late August as it's made its way past Florida, very close to the coast there, and now past Cuba. Senior National Security Correspondent David Martin joins us from the Pentagon. David, how concerned was the Pentagon about this Russian ship? Well, this is uh, something that uh, navies from all countries do all the time, which is uh, spy on each other's navies. Uh, what, what set this apart was that it was a, a brand new uh, Russian uh, research vessel, which made this long, slow transit uh, down the east coast of the uh, United States and it's now uh, completed its uh, transit and it's off the coast of Cuba where it's expected to make a uh, port call. This research vessel had underwater submersibles with it uh, which would be capable of going down to the ocean floor and mapping out the undersea communications cables uh, that uh, connect the U.S. to its, its forces uh, in Europe and, and uh, around the world. So interestingly, here's <clears throat> President Obama in Alaska and yeah. in the Bering Sea, you had Chinese warships there for the very first time and this massive parade in China where they're showing off all of their military might and at the same time, the Chinese president announces cutting forces by 300,000. I was struck by the odd timing there to, to show off how amazingly strong and massive your military is and then to announce that, that you're cutting it by 300,000. Well, I wouldn't call it a cut so much as a streamlining. The, the, for for uh, decades, the, the Chinese military has relied on quantity rather than quality. It has a massive, massive army. Uh, but it is trying to modernize itself and starting to build things like uh, aircraft carriers and stealth jet fighters. Uh, which are the kind of technology that has made the U.S. military number one in the world. And if it's going to do that, it has to uh, uh, take this outmoded army and make it much smaller. And that 300,000 cut is going to come mainly from the army and it's going to save a lot of money that can then be invested in more modern technology. And the purpose of this more modern technology is to build a force that is capable of keeping the United States further and further away from the Chinese mainland if it were ever to, to come to war. David Martin at the Pentagon. David, thank you. Sure thing. A Russian ship comes what might be a little too close for comfort to a major American military installation while China impresses and surprises during a muscle flexing in Beijing. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin is keeping track of all of it from the Pentagon tonight. A 70-gun salute in Tiananmen Square to mark the end of the war with Japan. A show of strength ahead of President Xi's visit to the White House later this month as China demonstrates its military prowess 70 years after the end of World War II. 12,000 Chinese soldiers marched through Beijing today. Also on display, a cruise missile known as a carrier killer capable of destroying an aircraft carrier at sea. And China's J-31 fighter jet, a near replica of the U.S. F-35, the most expensive weapons program in Pentagon history. The Chinese version, some say, engineered with stolen U.S. technology. Then a surprising announcement by the Chinese president, an admission that the Chinese economy, like the U.S., requires defense budget cuts. I announced that China will cut its number of troops by 300,000. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin watched from the stands. Russia and China recently finished rare joint naval exercises in the Sea of Japan. Their navies have been working together now for a couple of years. We got to remember, going back to 2013 in the crisis in the Syrian civil war, uh, Chinese and Russian vessels sortied together in the eastern Mediterranean as a warning to the United States and NATO. Meanwhile, off the coast of the U.S. state of Georgia, a Russian spy ship capable of cutting cables and tapping into other underwater sensors passed within 300 miles of the U.S. ballistic missile submarine base at Kings Bay, home to the U.S. Navy's Ohio-class fleet, whose boomers are capable of firing multiple warheads that can strike up to 240 cities at once. Furthermore, those five Chinese warships that were seen in the Bering Sea while President Obama was visiting Alaska, they have since reversed course, we're told by Pentagon officials, Brett. And Jen, what about these new attacks by ISIS using chemical weapons? Well, Brett, new evidence tonight that ISIS has launched more attacks using mustard agents. In response, the Pentagon has ordered its 3,500 troops in Iraq to dust off their chemical suits and refamiliarize themselves with their protective equipment. ISIS has fired more shells at Kurds, causing painful blisters and a rocket near the Mosul Dam, which left a mysterious yellow cloud in the air, Brett. Okay, we'll follow it. Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Jen, thanks. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring thee down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord.